Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some random cards that have gone up in price. And I've noticed that Mirage, especially Mirage and the Dark, the Dark being quite surprising, Mirage not being that surprising, that cards have just shot up, up and they have not got down. They have not gone down. So even I played in Mirage, it, has, it is my favorite set of all time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's so many good things about it. I, I like the jungle theme with the cats and the gorillas and the animals. That was very appealing to me as a child. But I never would have expected that the set would be good. So I played Mirage and Visions and it was like, mm. Visions especially wasn't great. Mirage was better than Visions. Like no one liked Visions. I played the cards and I felt like, oh, this is not really like as good as this is not like a, a golden age of Magic the Gathering. Like I would argue that Lorwyn and Shadowmoor, very creative sets, very beautiful artwork. Mirage is just kind of like I enjoyed it, but I don't think many people did because they quit. Uh, Mirage also suffered from a lot of cheating. Cheating was, there was a combo deck. It's called Carnivorous Bloom. It's a very famous combo deck where if you can imagine... Uh, Summer Bloom, if you guys remember Summer Bloom deck, if you have a certain opening hand, you just win the game. Well, Carnivorous Bloom is was the first, com quote, combo deck. And you won by putting cards in your lap. So every champion during this period of time or every winner put cards in their lap. It sounds ridiculous to assume that everyone is doing it. But I went to a larger event. I think it was... I forget what it was. I think Radio Shack had like a tournament. <laughs> Radio Shack was sh selling a lot of Magic cards and as was GameStop. But GameStop was always like smaller and Radio Shack was always bigger at the time. And everyone had the same deck and everyone had their cards in lap. It's, I, was, I went there. I was like, wow, you guys are really good. And as a little kid, right? I'm in, uh, I think, elementary school or middle school. I'm like, wow, these guys are just the best. I can't believe it. And come today we see the exact same happening with the what is his name jared you know people stacking their deck people stacking their opponent's deck and even the card and lap com technique is still being used today um that one dude had a bunch of cards in his lap and he so he would present a 50 free card deck and the opponent would be shuffled i don't know how why the opponent wouldn't know that they're missing seven cards but seven cards would be in his hand, and then he would, you know, draw them from his lap, and then that was how he won every single game. He was a Magic the Gathering champion, even recently. So, um, all right, anyway, back to some of the crazy speculations. I have to go via my bulk, because I feel like I have a lot of these. The great part about spec, the great part about what's happening right now for me personally, this might be different from you guys, but I own a lot of this stuff because I play Magic. Sometimes I'll watch a channel and it'll be very clear to me that they don't actually... You might be like, oh, well, you don't, you're not an expert in... All... Yeah, I could give two blanks about Standard, to be honest, but I own a ton of these cards because if you played Magic as long as I do, you would recognize... No one is going to want a Baron until like right now. Like this is not a card anyone even put in their trade binders. So if you open Urza Saga pack and you got this card, you just put it into your bulk pile. All right, let's open another pack. Oh, another Baron. Okay, bulk. Oh, another Baron. Bulk. Oh, shit, a Baron. So these are the cards that like you did not want to get, which is the entire the Dark set, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, yeah, you got Maze of If, but... I don't remember if Maids of If was considered a good card back in the day. I know Blood Moon was, but uh, I, I do know that Back to Basics was the blue card you wanted. And, and Time Spiral, but Time Spiral wasn't actually that pricey back then. So B Back to Basics and Morphling. Wow. Morphling was the original. They called it Superman, all the articles. I don't know why they did that, but... Morphling was what you wanted. You could trade one Morphling for a hundred Barons, right? Which now, in hindsight, would have been okay. But back then, people would have thought that you ripped off the person who gave you the one Morphling. All right, so moving on to Legends. Uh, just crappy cards are going up in price. 
I never liked this card very much. And I did play the Savannah Lion deck. I never had it in my deck because it's... Um, I don't want to say that it was not good. It just wasn't $80, right? It was like a 50 cent card. So essentially, you have many things happening right now. I will take the rest of the video to talk about the format that you want me to talk about, 93, 94. So I didn't believe it was legit because a lot of the cards that were spiking, I never played. I had these cards, right? I never played. So I, play, pay, I played Giant Grove, Dark Ritual, Lightning Bolts. I played the Turn 1 Hypnotic Spectre. And none of these cards spiked up in price, but Thunder Spirit did. But I don't remember anyone playing that card. And yes, we had Legends packs and we had all of that stuff. So it seemed like people were spiking cards on the reserve list for a format that did not exist. Because my question would be, hmm, well... The best opening hand I can imagine as a little kid when I used to play is turn one Dark Ritual and Hypnotic Spectre. But why is Dark Ritual and Hypnotic Spectre going up? Because they're not on the reserve list, right? So it kind of seemed like it was just a fake format. Like it seemed very, very fake in my opinion. But then what happened was I think it became real because it's an attractive format for people with money. That's what it is. If you have money and you didn't have money growing up, as a, let's say that you didn't have as much money. I, I mean, we all have more money now than when we were little kids. I had a $5 weekly allowance, which was probably among the highest of my classmates. I did have to vacuum. I did have to do chores and laundry and stuff like that and mow the lawn and uh, do things to help around home. But I would get $5 and that was one pack. That is one pack. And the amount of the, you have to save. So I really wanted to save for the Pokemon movie and it was like 20 bucks. And you, so you have to save an entire month of allowance to get one VHS movie. And for Magic, you couldn't, there wasn't really any singles that you were buying. Uh, Wizard of the Coast opened the store, but I never, I don't remember them selling singles. I know Radio Shack never sold singles. I know the only place that sold singles was uh, a place in Exton called, where I lived called BC Collectibles, and they didn't really know what they were doing. They were just selling baseball cards, and Magic was kind of just meh. Um, I bought all my Pokemon cards from them because they were the only people who had Pokemon cards in stock ever because no one ever went, no little kids would ever go. It's like one of those collectible stores with autographs and jerseys and helmets, and it's like your parents, well, my, my parents didn't, weren't into sports, but like my friend's parents were really into him because uh, they were really into sports and it was nice i grew up with one of my friends like being really into the philadelphia eagles so i would always go tag along with them to go see eagles games and sixers and stuff like that that's the type of place they go to right but they also carried pokemon and magic um and it was the only place that carried magic singles and everything was like even as a little kid i knew the prices were not very good um i would save my money and then my parents um are my friend's parents would drive us to BC Collectibles. The dad would just like start talking to the dude for hour, not hours, like maybe an hour plus. And we would just get packs to open and buy singles. And uh, they had legends. They had some incredibly rare stuff. I remember like seeing a Black Lotus, um, Power 9 all over the place. And dual lands were like in bulk, like not in bulk, but they were not displayed in the case because all of... I would say 99% of the case was just baseball cards, football cards, sports cards, and they just stuffed whatever they thought was like over $20, like a Black Lotus, in the little pile. They wouldn't even like spread them out. They just stack them in containers. I remember like saying, oh, I really wish I could, you know, save more money to get a Black Lotus uh, at that point in time, but it would have took in like, it would have took four or five years, which is know to save up five dollars a week to get that card anyway that's it bye guys